All right, hi everybody, it's me. <laughs> Balkai Night 22. Oh my god, what the fuck? All right. Not to know Taizai. Chapter 150. Well, majority of the chapter will, well, well to a lesser extent, yeah. Uh, more or less like half of the chapter. Yeah, like almost like 60-70% of the chapter really focuses on Escanor. I cannot believe what transpired. What literally transpired in this chapter with Escanor. Whatever that bitch's name is, Melisindra with she was about to eat his soul, and she did. Her his soul. Escanor's soul. Burnt her. Burnt her alive. I, I, I'm not joking around when I say this. I, 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 it's ridiculous. Right, let me go back a little further. I think I was like, what, page 12? I'm not really sure. Alright, let's go back a few. I, I just can not believe what happened. Okay. Like, I think it was page, um, yeah, page seven. She's, she says, all oh, the boastings and things, but hubris, uh, you should have it. Thanks for the meal. It burns her alive. She has pains in her stomach. Her body is on fire. And... The soul comes out, and she's just burning alive. And she's like saying, no, this level of magic can't be right. How could you have this kind of power? And Eskinor's there, and he says, sunshine, the pinnacle of my magic power. Oh, what's going on? Oh, sorry about that. It's blurry, apparently. Anyway. I just, it gets better, by the way, it gets better, she gets burned to fucking cinders, and she gets sent to like a, down the fucking mountain, or wherever that is, and here's the kick about Escanor, when the sun is up, he is like, he's untouchable, when the sun is up, he is untouchable. You cannot kill him. The best thing you can do is run away. When the sun is not up and it's nighttime, he's weak as fuck. <laughs> so the <all> the time. <coughs> the demons, the Ten Commandments, can beat him is when it's nighttime. So he's like. In some in some respects, I don't want to make this reference, this comparison. He's sort of like a werewolf, but I don't know if you could say that. Cause you know how a werewolf, you know, they only turn into a werewolf when the the full moon is out at night, and how he can only turn into powerful Escanor when the sun is up. But and. Uh, that's not a really, really good comparison. The real comparison is he's like Superman. Plain and simple. Sun gives him his powers, and he's just unbeatable. You can't beat him when the sun's up. It is impossible. It is literally impossible. 
Think about it. She was going to eat his soul. And she couldn't. Because it was burning her stomach. And the soul came out of her. You can't even... You can't even eat his soul. They're fucked. They're fucked. Oh, Melodas, Fon, and the Yeah. But Escanor? They're all fucked. Majority of the Ten Commandments are fucked if they fight Escanor. Literally fucked. Now, of course, if you fight them at night, that's a different story. But, you know, he basically introduced, after that whole scene with her, he introduces himself to um, Jericho and Elaine and Bond and so on and so forth. You know, and they're related that everything's fine. And basically, um, he's in that form until nighttime, and nighttime comes and he's back to his weaker self. And he makes a, he asks Bod about Merlin. And he's like, I don't know, because I haven't been with them since Leonor, Leonor, well, the last time Bond was with them. And he's like, oh, as Skidor says, he has to sell, sell this liquor. <laughs> <coughs> and he can't uh, join them up with them. He wants to join up with them to send them his sins. Before he has to do this, the selling of his liquor, and you know, after that, basically we get King, and basically um, he's showing up. He sees Elaine. He's like, Elaine. By the way, if King was the one fighting girl and the other one, hey, get shit. That's just my personal opinion. But after that, last leg of the chapter, we finally get to see Diane and Matrona. Diane's completely forgotten about everything. And she's now devoted to being a dancer. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, Galther. You just ruined any chance that King has with Diane. I'll be satisfied with myself. <laughs> but um, that's pretty much what. So, next week's chapter is pretty much going to be about Diane. Um, what, how, you know, wherever she's going to be now. Um, the Ten Commandments are fucked. When it concerns us, they're literally fucked. He has an eight pack abs. Like, you know, like a six pack? He's got an eight pack. An eight pack. This guy, this guy, this guy, Eskimo, when he's this powerful, he's literally. I don't want to broadcast this. A god. I would even go that far. I would go that far. Yeah, I would go that far. He is literally a god. The power, he has the power of the sun in his body. The pinnacle of my magic power, sunshine. And it's just bur she's burning her. She's burning her. She just falls to the ground. It's just total unquitable domination against the Ten Commandments. Let's go on. Um obviously I guess can't, we're gonna get pretty much next week, like I said, Diane, um, this storyline now. Obviously, something's gonna have to happen because she was gonna be a dancer now. <laughs> she ain't fighting anymore, so that's a big problem. That's a big problem. Uh, we'll see what happens. I'm guessing King's gonna wanna wanna go find her. I mean, now that Descartes was just owned one of the two 
the Ten Commandments. Um, yeah. Here's the crazy thing. What do you think about it? Escanor, Melas. How can you beat that? How can you beat that? How can you beat that? Um, you can't. You can't beat that. Well, of course, Escor obviously can't fight a knight because it is weak. But this is just absurd. And just... What can you say? You can't say anything. This guy's a fucking monster. Um, also, I should note, this was, I found this very interesting. Melodos and Escanor both, when they're first introduced, they both are barkeeps. Well, to an extent. Melodos is a restaurant owner, but close enough. A barkeep. And it's kind of interesting when you think about it. That that's the line of work they decided to take on to, um... After being leaving the sins or you know, staying away from the sins and stuff. So, but yeah, rating five out of five for everything that Eskimo was in. And I just. <laughs> this, this guy. It was worth the wait. It was worth the fucking wait to introduce him as one of the sins. And now that he's introduced, holy shit! Those sins better have those 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 tank commands better have a fucking nuke. Yeah, a nuke. They better have someone who's got a nuke in their back pocket, cause you ain't walking away after fighting Escanor. You're gonna have to have a fucking nuke. But that's all I got for you guys. I'm Bonk and I too. See you guys later. Diane's a, they're going to be a dancer. And Escanor is now the king of the gods. I'll see you guys later.